color is central to my work. The more I play with colors, the more I am reminded that it is only the primary colors that are pure. It is a difficult question because there are many colors I can think about. Perhaps I can answer the question by saying that twilight is my favorite time of day. The reason I like it is that it makes me emotional and stimulates my imagination. It is all the different hues that I love. So much subtlety and nuance. Nothing that is stuck or definitive, but the mixes of everything. I see that the complexity in my work. It is not any one layer of color that goes into my print, but multiple layers. And it is where the stencils and the colors overlap that I found the most intriguing. So, favorite colors on my palette. Hmm, let me think about that. On my palette, I'd have to say it would be the use of black and white. Um, a combination of black and white uh, along with the colors um, create some of these amazing uh, muted tones that I find intriguing in my work. Well, I guess technically black and white are not really colors, so there you have it. Hi, my name is Suchitra Matai and I am a multidisciplinary artist here in Denver. I thought about this question and I've come to the conclusion that I don't have a favorite color. Rather, I'm interested in how colors interact with one another. Do they complement one another? Uh, do they overpower one another? Uh, how does that interaction then uh, inform the themes in my work? And I really interested in particular historical color palettes. So I might look to Indian miniature paintings or Indian textiles or European Baroque patterns. So I think about uh, color very much in terms of their historical um, uh, basis or orientation. And then I use that information in my work. And I sometimes think about color in two categories. My favorite colors belong to either earthy, uh, you know, natural tones juxtaposed with very neon artificial color. So you'll often see a lot of color in my work, but sometimes it has a very culturally uh, specific meaning and or, and or uh, a historically specific meaning. Thanks. Color is super important to my practice as an artist. Some of my earliest memories are of colors and sounds, the kind of memories you make before you even have language to describe them, just sensory impressions. Sometimes I'll randomly come across a color out in the world that'll trigger a real deep emotional response, something almost physical, and I'll realize, oh, I had a toy that was that color when I was a kid, or those colors were used in a book I had, it's kind of a longing, almost a heartbreak. I think color can do that. I don't have a favorite color, but I do have palettes I like to work with. And I realize some of them are informed by the practice of color grading from film and television, like in the films of Wes Anderson, the way a palette is skewed to emphasize a narrow range of colors. I also like to pair one or two really saturated 
hues with the opposite color on the color wheel that's really toned down. So you might have a, a real intense turquoise against a, uh, you know, sort of a bronze or, or brown of some kind, or a bright cadmium red with a grayed out green. I like those kinds of relationships. I'll also admit there are certain colors that I try to avoid, colors I can't stand. For me, these are the pastel colors of Easter. And that's because one year I had too much Easter candy and I got really sick as a kid. And it sort of ruined those colors for me. As personal and idiosyncratic as that is, those colors make me nauseous and I don't feel any need to reclaim them. Since the content of my paintings often deals with human behavior, psychology, and identity, my approach to color is guided by its emotional effect. I don't feel like I'm always that successful with color. It's the one thing I, I probably struggle with the most. I'm just trying to understand how it works, how I can use it, and I think the important thing for me is to continue to just experiment and try new things. Green is my favorite color because the different shades, I think, perfectly represent the wide variety of moods that I feel every single day. Green is also the only color that gives me a great amount of energy and excitement. I have to say that I'm really scared of color and I mostly work in ceramics, although not exclusively. And the way that ceramicists have to deal with color is that you put a uh, glaze on a piece that looks nothing like the end result. So it can be really nerve wracking. And then to actually throw in a lot of color in there and be worried that it's going to be garish makes me stay away from color a lot of the times. I've made a lot, a lot of white work or things that are pretty, have very um, minimal saturation. And so one way that I give myself more courage when to use color is to look at other people's art. So if I see an, a painter whose work has just like such delicious rich colors and they're working off of each other, I'll print up that picture and put it in my studio as inspiration and as, as sort of like confidence building. I also do a lot, a lot of test tiles. So um, just trying things over and over because in ceramics, it's not like once you put color, you can change it. It's, it's once it's put on and fired, it's kind of like that's what you get. And you might be able to add some more glaze and refire it, but it's hard to really um, change the actual character. So, um, so it's it's a real it's definitely stressful using a lot of color. But when I do, like I said, I'll look at another artist's work and put up some images and kind of use that like their courage to give myself a little more courage. And then I also look at historical work because I think. Um, a lot of times if I want to use a color, it has to do with a particular sort of cultural or historical reference that I'm, I'm wanting to evoke. My sense and preference of color developed in early childhood. Growing up in India and surrounded by gritty, aging and crumbling surfaces, I was drawn like a magpie to the brightest and purest colors I could see. And those just happened to be hanging out of the moving window of a car everywhere on working women on littered streets, sweeping, laughing, and selling brightly colored wares. They wore the simplest saris in saturated colors with contrasting borders and blouses, costing pennies, bright red powdered circles on their ebony foreheads. On the streets, too, 
working in construction carrying broken stones or mixed cement were native nomad women called banjaras in tribal clothing that they had fashioned themselves deep dull maroons of thickly textured cotton faded in the harsh sun with intricate embroideries of mirrors and shells these colors and materials spoke to me of survival and endurance not only of overcoming life but celebrating the spirit and the joy of it by contrast my mother who had a european sensibility dressed my sister and me in pale shades of organdy and muslin so my earliest self expression came out of a small rebellion of sorts having learned a bit of sewing in school i began to go to the government handloom shops and pick out the brightest earthiest shades of roughly textured handloom cotton to fashion clothes for myself needless to say my mother was a bit dismayed apart from the colors i saw on the streets and those faded maroons and terracottas of the tribal women i had another favorite after weeks and months of hot and dusty summers the sudden and unrelenting onset of the monsoon would change the landscape almost overnight tender shades of green sprouted miraculously everywhere in mossy clumps from crevices of granite and old lime washed walls on bare branch trees and bushes and in lawns beneath bare free feet with tiny velvet beetles scurrying through the grass so i must say that those first vulnerable shades of green are the true colors of my heart symbolic of transformation the colors of new beginnings another color soaked into my memory is ochre Ochre is the color of sacred ceremonies, of river silt, of sandalwood paste, of damp seeping into cloth or paper or walls as a record of climate, of natural wild silk. It is also the color of turmeric stains that have faded. Ochre implies the passage of time. To me, it is the spiritual color of calm, of patience, and of meditation. I still hold close those twin impulses together in my work color that may be saturated and filled with the energy of living but always juxtaposed with a memory of loss rarely do such shades come out of a tube for they always seem to be drenched ground in arising from and part of a particular surface perhaps you can see how color is an emotion for me specific emotion related to memory that fades diffuses and reorganizes continuously into the present this is sue omi from omi graphics in steamboat springs colorado what's my favorite color Hmm, that is a tough question. I love color, all colors, and color is relative. So it's hard to say one is better than another. I work with lots of bright color, as you can see in this piece, which is titled Passage of Time. There are innumerable objects which are primarily recycled packaging pieces that have been inked and printed repeatedly over the course of two years. Once they achieve a beautiful patina of color, they are retired to become part of this installation. So that doesn't really answer the question, but I guess the bottom line would be Blue is my favorite color, only because of its calming, soothing, and water-like qualities. I swim every morning, even when it's zero degrees out, and I'm outside in the hot pool and steamboat. I love the color 
of the water. And it's not just one color, it's many, many colors. I love watching the surface of it. You see ultramarine and aqua and glints of ochre and orange. And then depending on what other people are wearing for bathing suits, you get little tiny hints of other really splendid colors. These new prints, which are all from a series titled Green Screen, demonstrate the layering of the pieces as they're printed on paper um, over and over through the press. This is partly what builds up the patina of color on the final pieces for the installation. Also, once they are printed, inevitably, they require at least a little bit of embellishment by hand working. And this is one of my favorite parts of the process because it's very calming and, and zen and intuitive. And all I'm doing is responding to things that I see that feel incorrect. So I might be adding a little bit of yellow over a tiny bit of blue or making a red a little bit redder or very often I'm using some white to push back or lighten some space. It's all about composition, balance, the push and pull of the space, and the color, obviously, is very, very important. I've just started a new series of pieces titled Poolside, which reference my love of going to the pool in the mornings. They all are very uh, representative of that effect of the surface of the water, at least to me. And they have a common thread of a beautiful pale turquoise cobalt blue that is my, one of my favorite watercolor colors by Daniel Smith. These are also printed on a beautiful Japanese laminated paper that has two surfaces, a gompi surface, which is very, very thin, that is laminated to a heavier mulberry surface on the back. And this paper is particularly beautiful in showcasing the effects of the watercolor paint. All of the elements in these are simply little bits of vellum that have been painted with watercolor and then cut into shapes and layered and collaged on the press before I print. These also go through the press numerous times to develop overlapping and layers. Thank you for visiting us at Omi Graphics. I'm Sue Omi and have fun with color.